This week I'm going to be kicking off my series on point of view, one of my favorite aspects of writing to talk about and experiment with. Today we're going to start with one of the most common and useful points of view, first person. I'm going to cover the definition, pros, and cons, and why it's one of the most powerful and useful point of views in today's writing world. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it lingers with readers. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's start with what first person point of view is. This is when you have a character who's narrating their story and telling it directly to the reader. Instead of passing through the author or some anonymous voice, it's the character speaking. This means they're using the pronouns I, me, we, us, our, that sort of a thing. I think it's easiest to understand through an example. One of my favorite first person series is Kevin Hearn's The Iron Druid Chronicles. In the first book, Hounded, his character Atticus says, I suppose I cannot complain because I'm not really a citizen of America. Mr. S called the NIS on me once, in fact. And after the NIS agents went away, that's when I sent Oberon over to poop on Mr. S's lawn for the first time. Notice Atticus is using the pronoun I. He's talking directly to the reader, telling them what he did and why he did it. That is what first person does. It allows the character to speak to the reader. Let's look at some of the pros of first person. One of the biggest advantages of first person point of view is how it dives deep into the narrator's mind. No other point of view will get as up close and personal with your characters as first person will. In first person, your readers will be able to see your characters' thoughts, their emotions, their feelings, and what they know. That can be a really powerful tool. When you use first person, you're showing your world, your event, your story through the perspective of a specific character. That can make your story much more interesting and engaging. For example, in The Book Thief by Marcus Zuckick, Death is telling the story of a girl named Liesel. At the same time, he's collecting souls of people who've died, and he shares some of those experiences with the readers, and we get to see how Death perceives the world and how when a person dies, he sees a particular color in the sky. Here's an example. She died in a suburb of Sydney. The house was number 45, the same as the Fiddler's Shelter, the sky was the best blue of afternoon. Like her papa, her soul was sitting up. Any point of view other than first person would be unable to get as intimately into Death's head as first person does. Death is not the type of character who's going to walk around having a lot of conversations with others and talking about his feelings and his thoughts. He's just not going to do that. So, in order to show Death's perspective, Zuckick used first-person point of view, and it's very effective, and it's really interesting. Another reason you might choose to use first-person point of view is to show your, your world, your event, your town, your story through the eyes of an outsider. When you do this, it allows you to control the release of information and make it so your readers only know as much as this outsider character knows. And that can be really vital when you're writing a mystery, a story with a surprise of some sort, or when you want to mislead your reader. It also gives you an excuse to explain parts of your world that you might not normally explain. Both Death and Atticus are outsiders in their respective environments. Atticus is not from Arizona, and Death is not human. This makes their perspective on the world around them interesting, and it makes them different from the people around them too, which can also build more curiosity in the reader. First person allows the author tighter control over the information the reader knows and other elements of the story. When an author slowly releases information, they build tension, suspense, and curiosity in their story and in their readers. I will rarely tell you that you should always or never do something when it comes to writing. One time I'm going to come very close to that is when it comes to memoirs. Memoirs should almost always be written in first person. When you write a memoir, you are telling your reader, I'm going to share my story with you. By doing that, you are agreeing to share your thoughts, your feelings, and what happened to you. If you write that in third person, it can come across like you're trying to hide something or like you're not owning your experiences and your thoughts. That makes you seem untrustworthy and unreliable and readers don't like that. 
they'll start to feel light too. If you're writing a memoir, you should most likely be using first person. The flip side of that is first person invites readers in. It creates this intimate relationship between the author and the reader. So by the time the reader gets to the end of the book, they feel like they know the author personally. They feel like they were there for that part of their life. That's what readers want. And that's what you as an author should be striving for is that connection. When you use first person in a memoir, it can make your story linger with readers. In The Alchemy of the Afterlife, Linda Kenneman shares her experiences as a hospice nurse with people passing away. And this leads to a very interesting perspective on life and death. And it also makes it feel like you know her and that you were with her for this time in her life by the end of the story. That's what a good memoir should do. It should pull your readers into your life and your thoughts and your emotions. Like with many things, first person's greatest strengths can also be its greatest weaknesses. Now I'm going to talk about the cons of first person point of view. By limiting the point of view to a specific narrating character, you're also limiting the knowledge that your reader can gain about your story. What I mean by that is your narrating character can't know what this character over here is thinking and feeling unless they're reading their body language and even then you're seeing someone's body language through the eyes of a narrator that can be a little biased. And your reader can't know what's happening in the other room across town in the next city. Even though some important event may be happening over there, your narrating character isn't aware of it so your reader isn't aware of it. That can really limit what you're trying to do with your story, and depending on the type of story that you're telling, that might mean that first person doesn't work for you. It's also really limiting when it comes to developing other characters, because your narrating character might not notice important things about those other characters, or maybe that other character isn't present enough in your narrating character's life to really be fully fleshed out, even though they're important for the story. Also, your narrating character might not talk about certain things. They might not share certain aspects of the story because of who they are. An example of this would be if your narrator is a guy and one of the other main characters is his younger sister, he's probably not gonna mention her first period, even if it's really important to the story and he was there for whatever catastrophic event happened. He's probably not gonna talk about that. So be aware of the things that your character will and will not talk about, because that can make it so that first person is not the best choice for your story. First person is also inherently biased and subjective. It's through the eyes of one specific character. This is why it works really well in memoir, because someone is telling you their story, their thoughts, their opinion. This is also why it really doesn't work in academic and research-based writing where the whole point is to be objective. This can create a problem in creative writing when the narrator starts to come across as unreliable. Sometimes in fiction in particular, you want an unreliable narrator and that's the whole point. Other times you don't. So you need to make sure that their bias, that their subjective point of view is still honest and is still authentic to them. Otherwise, your character will come across as a liar. And that can be a problem in nonfiction in particular. If you're writing a memoir, even if you're using first person, it can still come across as unreliable. And you probably want to make sure that's not happening. Be aware that that is a pitfall of first person and look for ways to avoid it. Last, I'd like to share some of my thoughts as an editor and a reader on first person. I find first person the most interesting, engaging, and exciting when the character who's narrating has a distinct voice. What I mean by that is when you put your character's passage in with a hundred other first person characters' passages, I should be able to pick out your characters. I could do that with Atticus in Hounded and with Death in The Book Thief. Their voices are so distinct, they're so interesting and unique that I would be able to pick them out of the crowd. That is your goal when you're using first person point of view. And when you do that, it is so memorable. That's going to be the thing that makes your piece linger with readers. It makes them talk about it. It makes them share your book with others and recommend you. That's how you get read. If you don't have a narrating character with a distinct 
first person voice, maybe you should use another point of view. Or maybe there is some other aspect of the story that's going to create that lingering quality. Just know that that's what readers are looking for in first person. I do want to caution you against using first person present tense. Now again, I'm not going to tell you don't do it ever. What I am going to tell you is it's very difficult to pull off. And when you don't do it perfectly, it is so obvious. It makes your piece come across as narcissistic and it just sticks out. There's something about present tense in general that stands out in a way that past tense doesn't. So if you want your tense to be invisible, use past tense. The other issue with first person present tense is there are not very many people or characters who are going to walk around narrating their life as it happens. How often do you walk around and are thinking in your head, right now I'm filming a YouTube video about first person point of view and I'm a little nervous because there's starting to be clouds in the background and it might mess up my lighting. Not very often. No, people don't really do that. You need to have one of those few people, one of those few characters who will do that if you're going to use first person present tense. Or they need to have a reason to be narrating their story as it's happening. Otherwise, first person past tense might be a better choice. And the other reason I want to caution you about using first person present tense is right now, the people who are using it tend to be beginning writers. I don't know why. Maybe it has something to do with the generation or just where we are in writing, but a lot of new writers tend to start out writing first person present tense. So if you do it, that marks you as a beginner, even if you're not. So when you're submitting to agents, editors, and publishers, they might put you in the beginning writer pile. You might not want to be in their beginning writer pile if it is not a, yes, I want to publish this beginning writer pile. So be aware of that. There's nothing wrong with using it and everybody has to start writing somewhere. Just know that that's the current trend and that if you want it to be published, it needs to be perfect. First person point of view is very powerful. It adds voice, emotion, and perspective to your story. It's a great way to control the release of information. And if your character has a distinct voice, it can really make your story memorable. I highly recommend you at least try first person if you haven't before. You can even take a scene that you've already written and change it and see what it does for your story and your characters. If you found this advice on first person point of view helpful, please like below. And if you have any other thoughts on first person point of view, I'd love to have a conversation about it in the comment section. For more videos like this, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you create stories that linger with readers, because stories that linger get remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. And now it's your turn. Try out first person point of view. See how it can help you ignite your ink.